Uh, Zach Polanski, the deputy leader of the Green Party, you're here. What brings you here to Harlow today? Um, I've come to Harlow today because there's a real chance of green success on the doorsteps. We know that residents are saying they're not getting what they need from their Labour and Conservative councillors and they're looking for something different. And the Green Party do politics very differently. We are embedded in our communities. We work hard all year long. And uh, our target candidate in this ward, Julie, um, will be a fantastic councillor. In fact, I've just been hearing from her the work she's doing already and she's not even elected yet. So uh, by people voting Green, they know what sort of change they're going to get in Harlem. And across this 2024, 40 elections around the world, two big local elections, general election. What are your hopes and expectations around the country, but also for someone like Harlow? It's a huge year for elections and we clearly do need change. We have this huge inequality crisis at the national level where multimillionaires and billionaires are getting richer and richer while people are using food banks and people are homeless. So nationally, we're very much advocating for a wealth tax. This is taxing the super multimillionaires or billionaires to make sure we're putting that money back into both green investment, but also standing up for workers and making sure they have proper pay, working and living conditions. But that's right at the local level too. So in places like Harlow, it's about making sure we're making sure that there's social housing being built and ultimately that people are not left uh, out on the street or paying unaffordable rents or so-called affordable housing, which is never affordable. It's also about making sure that communities are more cohesive. People feel like they have places to go. Yeah, lots of talk of things like antisocial behaviour, but very often young people don't have places to go. We need to make sure we're investing in local youth services and uh, ultimately role models for young people so, so they've got investment in things. And then, of course, there's the climate and ecological crisis, making sure we're protecting our green spaces, that people still have access to clean air and that they can breathe properly. Do you still find it about, we've now spoken for a couple of minutes, but, you know, you've spoken on a whole range of issues. Is that, is that the sort of... Over the years, over the last 10, 20 years, the Greens have, have matured and to be able to talk about the whole panoply of our items and policies. Yeah, I think people know well that the Green Party really care about the environment and the planet and clean air. But actually, there's no environmental justice without social, racial and economic justice too. So in terms of all of these, uh, all of these policies, they ultimately do have an environmental lens. So if you take dirty air, for instance... Uh, toxic air that people are often breathing. This is often worse in places where you have social housing or working class communities. And that's because these communities often don't have the political representation to say, we want this air cleaned. So ultimately everything that's environmental is also a social justice issue. We also need to make sure that we're working to change industries and that, you know, you only have to look at Wales where recently lots of steel workers lost those jobs. There's lots of industries where we've got to look ahead to the future and make sure we're having that just transition now so people have good jobs that are well paid. Just a couple more questions. I leave. Um, you're in the London Assembly. Yeah. And one of the things, and I have to be careful the language I use here, but people are very concerned that councils in London are shipping people out here to Harlow but providing no infrastructure, no support, and it's almost they're getting them off their books. You know, there's lots of councils who are name-checked in this um, because this is a, a very carefully planned town that the infrastructure and socialisation are so important. Is that a concern to you? Yeah, it's a real issue that ultimately people often get scapegoated. This can happen with migrants and refugees as well. I think we need to be really clear that the problem here is infrastructure, that actually people's fears are often very real, but it's not about the people. The fear is getting a doctor's appointment, good luck getting a dentist, making sure there's transport that's affordable and accessible. Actually, all of these things need to be in place, and they often aren't. Now, I think once you've got in the, these things in place, there's always an argument to be able to house people, particularly the most vulnerable people. But you've got to have the infrastructure in place, otherwise that keeps exacerbating community tensions. Well, you're going to, there's a group of people behind us uh, <laughs> waiting to go. Um, knocking on doors, people open the doors, politicians, mate, you're all the same. What's, what's, what, how do you respond? Uh, it's always heartbreaking to hear that people feel like uh, politics won't change things. Very often that is the broken first past the post voting system. That means people's votes have not made a difference. However, we've seen all across the country that we've quadrupled our number of seats in the last four years. And people can see, even under the first past the post system, Greens can and do win. And we do that by making sure we're around all year round. We're knocking on doors exactly as we're going to do today. Not knocking just for people's votes, although that is important, but actually knocking to listen to people, to find out what they care about. It's a pretty easy formula that once you know what people care about and you have the solutions to that, making sure you're communicating that message means that you can expect to see Greens continuing to win more and more as the years go by.